Welcome to Life Source Church. Subscribe to our podcast on iTunes or SoundCloud. Welcome to the Thursday edition of our Life Source Church podcast on Money Works. I'm Pastor Dave Langren. And you know what? By the end of this month, you and I will have been working together right. for 15 That's right. years. Yep. That's pretty incredible to think about. Shoo. Today, he and I are going to be talking about some money issues, and issues of the soul that really affect how they feel That's right. and what they do about our money. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> this will be fun. 15 years, we're too casual. As you know, I do a lot of counseling, a lot of counseling. And there were some issues in your sermon on Sunday that really connected with what a lot of people deal with. Mm-hmm. Um, so much of that, the, the idea of significance and security. Uh, remind us again of what you said about how these things relate to money. All right. So it's two basic needs we all feel, right? And there's probably others we could list in there. But significance, I, I want to matter. I I want to feel important. I want to feel like my life makes a difference, right? Security. Am I safe? Am, you know, am I okay? Um, oftentimes, uh, we feel secure when we feel loved, too, all right? Mm-hmm. So, God made us that way. Mm-hmm. And because his desire, rightfully so, is that we find our significance in him. Okay? I mean, you know how oh, that works, should. right? <laughs> when, and, and when we don't find our significance in him, that was God has said we're valuable. And he's proven it by sending his son, right? And uh, his whole plans. Um, and so we need to find our significance in him. Whether anybody else in the world thinks we're significant, mm-hmm. you know, how we're being treated, or what our financial condition is. Mm-hmm. So in our world, if you don't have money... Oftentimes the challenge comes, you know, that, yeah, you know, the more m- money you have, the more important you are. Mm-hmm. And we experience that because, guess what, in our world, if you have more money, mm-hmm. you probably get better treatment in a lot of places. It certainly okay? seems that way. Because our world isn't based on the things of God. And so uh, it's very easy for us to get caught up in that trap and feel like, oh, you know, I need this money. Mm-hmm. So that I can mm-hmm. be important. So I have some clout. So I can, you know. And once again, if you have money and you can use it, mm-hmm. give it clout, that's fine. But we can't be looking to God for that. Same with our security, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and security might even fall under that whole idea, you know, the love of money. Good. Of being a root of all evil. Because we want to feel love. We want to feel like we matter. And then so we begin to love this money because the money keeps me safe. This is probably especially true for people who grew up. In situations where there wasn't enough money, or mom and dad had certain beliefs about money, and so people grow up and struggle with that. But so both of those issues are very detrimental when we don't get our significant security from God, which means if I try to get my significance from money, Mm -hmm. it's gonna it's It's gonna it's leading. Yeah, and it's just not gonna work. If I try to get my security from money, it's not gonna work. I mean, you must see this. When you counsel people, not just with money, but in general, mm-hmm. what, do you, what do you experience with this idea of significant security when people aren't getting it from God? What happens? Failure. Um, you know, as they're, they're dealing with those issues, I mean, that's what they're looking at. That's their focal point. And so when they're looking at those things, which are going to fail. See, that's, that's the cool thing about who God is. That's right. He doesn't fail. And so when we look to anything but him... Yeah, for a little while it might sustain something, but then all of a sudden there's that downfall, right. and it leaves them. Right. Because and so with money, eventually it's not going to do it. No. Eventually it's not going to work. Them. They may not even lose all their money, but it just isn't going to do what they thought it was going to do. And for a while it might feel like it, but eventually mm. it's going to drop them. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So depending upon where people are coming from in life and what other kinds of things might be they might be dealing with in life. Um, what do you see as probably the one or two most difficult things people struggle with? Yeah, you might know better about that than me, <laughs> right? Uh, well, just from your experience. Your, I know, I'm just thinking the, uh, I, I really think it's the idea of making that conscious change of belief that God provides my needs. I mean, sometimes we know that, but it doesn't connect with mm. life, right? Well, yeah, I'm giving I have, away money. How does that make sense? Well, that, yeah, even if you aren't giving it, even if you aren't giving it away, right? Yeah. And say, I mean, assume you're giving, but you're you're going through life, and something happens, and now you don't have a job, or now you don't have the money. A special need comes up, that then we fret, right? Mm-hmm. We worry. We, but the reason we do is because we've forgotten mm-hmm. that God is the one who provides the money. He's always provided the money. Mm-hmm. He provided the money when we had it. 
He provided what we need when we didn't have money, it seems like. And so I think really getting that connection. Wait, God really does provide. God really does provide. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes we struggle with that, I think, because when we aren't looking at money the way God says to, mm -hmm. and we aren't using money the way God says to, we get ourselves in binds mm -hmm. that now it's, we're thinking, oh, boy. Um, how can I even ask God to get me out of this? Yeah. And, uh, and it also may be that God lets us really go through some hard times. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember a time in our lives, um, we've been Christians for a number of time, married for a number of years, and as we were getting into our first house, and uh, our only house. Right? <laughs> uh, That's true. But um, we ended up, and because of my decisions along the way in trying to make things happen, I think we were about twelve, fourteen thousand dollars $14,000 in debt beyond the house. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, well, early in our lives, we had had about $10,000 worth of debt before I understood all this stuff. And God, like, almost, you know, miraculously pulled us out of that. Mm -hmm. Well, the second time, when I knew better, I really should have been making different choices, God let us wrestle with that for a few years yeah. to get out, you yeah. know. So, um, so the point is that you, you kind of worry about how can I ask God about this, but you can, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, absolutely. From wherever you're at right now, just start aligning today. Definitely. I know usually it's you and I, when we come into situations, people are in that place where it's like, right. we don't know what to do or where to go. Right. Um, and, and they find themselves really struggling with, what's my first step? What, what, right. what do I do next? How do I make that work? What suggestions would you give to somebody? So first, what do you give to somebody? Yeah, well, first step, and it's, it's always, to be honest, it's hard, being human, it's hard for me to give them this first step. Mm -hmm. uh, because we sit down with them, we look at their money, goes, and, and obviously, if, because of decisions they've made, and then things that have happened to them, unexpected, you know, they, they don't have enough money on paper to, to mm -hmm. pay all these things yeah, off. that's the problem. But I always tell them, yeah, look, you, you, you got into this place because of wrong priorities, mm -hmm. right? Believing the wrong, you're looking at money the wrong way, trying to do, right. and the only way you're going to fix that is to start with right priorities. Mm -hmm. And so as hard as it is to look at this, I think you need to begin giving first. I, I really believe that. And that's when their head explodes, right? Well, yeah. Ah, how could I do yeah. that? Yeah, it depends, right, and where they're at at the <laughs> moment. But it, it's true. The idea is that put God first. God is the solution to your problem. Right. Mm -hmm. Don't put him last. Right. He's the solution, put him first. And so, uh, and you know, my personal, per, uh, pretty strong persuasion, maybe even conviction, is that the percentage we ought to be starting with is 10%. Mm. And so I encourage him, let's trust God, start there. And yes, you know what the reality is, you aren't going to have enough money to pay the credit card company this, this month. Mm. So you've got to pick up the phone and call the credit card company. And you've got to talk. And you got, but you go through the hard stuff. And if you'll yeah. do that, God always honors that. Amen. God Amen. always Amen. honors us when we put him first and, and trust him. Because, boy, you don't have enough money. And now you start off giving him 10% off the top. You really got to trust him. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But God grows your faith and it changes everything. Absolutely. Yeah, and just to kind of tag on to the end of that, um, it takes people two, three, five, ten years to get into that kind of trouble. And right. you need to realize it's going to take some time. They think, well, I'm honoring God now, so, you know, this month he's going to fix my problem. You know, and I'm going to win the lottery or something well, like that. I don't know about the lottery, <laughs> but sometimes he does fix it that I'm not month. condoning the lottery. Yeah, sometimes he does fix it that month, yeah. but not usually. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So... What's coming up on tomorrow's podcast? I hear there's some things in the works. Well, the plan is to uh, that there's, there'll be a testimony tomorrow by one of our families cool. uh, about how they've learned about what God says about money and, and how that's worked in their lives, the difference it's made. Cool. That sounds exciting to me. Uh, where are we headed in our next sermon series? Well, not next sermon, this series. We're, well, we're going to continue on Money Works. Uh, and... Um, I'm pretty sure, it sounds pretty sure, you know, Pastor always has to leave himself a back door here. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure that we are going to be addressing the issues of the heart and how, uh, how to get our heart where it needs to be so that our money gets where it needs to be. And uh, so, I mean, really crucial. Jesus just zeroes in on the heart issue mm. when he talks about money. And it really is. And it's funny because even... It's not a financial issue, ultimately. No, no, no. It's really a heart issue. And how you see God 
and understand him and then even interpret God in, in, in a way, yep. which is kind of cool. Well, guess what? And that's all the time we have. <laughs> it goes by quick. Join our podcast again tomorrow as Walt interviews someone about how the Lord has taught them in the area of money and what they've learned. Once again, we'd love to have you join us on Sunday morning at 9.30 or 11, uh, or watch our 9.30 service live at LifeSourceChurchOnline.com. I'm Dave Langren. Thanks for joining us today. Mm-hmm.